and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Dr. Bridget Bratt from Protivity. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to talk with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Dr. Bridget Bratt, the Associate Director of Data Protection Strategy at Protivity. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest. But in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Bridget, hello and welcome. Hello. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I'm so excited for you to be here and to hear your story and how you got into data. So, Tell me, you are the Associate Director of Data Protection Strategy at Protivity. So tell me, what type of business is Protivity? So Protivity is a global management consulting company, and we are owned by Robert Half. So if you've ever seen the staffing agency, Robert Half, they own us. Um, But we do everything from um, technology work, risk, audit, digital, you name it, we do it, right? So we do it all over the country, other countries. Um, and yeah, we do a little bit of everything. Yeah, I love it. So as the Associate Director of Data Protection Strategy, what is it you do for the company? What don't I do? That would be a better question. <laughs> so, um, yeah, my title is misleading. And of course, I'm sure most people in data, their titles are misleading, right? Because we all do a little bit of everything in it. Um, but my primary focus is to help companies, um, all sizes, get better about understanding where their sensitive data is, how to protect it, right? And what their overall strategy is, right? So really it it just goes beyond governance, beyond um, data management, really into incident response and vulnerability management, right? So all the things that you need to be aware of to keep your data safe and secure. And so that is really my my biggest role at the company. I'm sure that keeps you busy. So, so have, then tell me, Bridget, how do you work with data in your job? So data to me is everything, right? So, um, you know, because I always joke with companies and say, you know, when people say, oh, we don't have any important data, nobody cares about it, nobody's going to come for us. And it's like, well, if there wasn't for data, then all of these wonderful hackers and bad guys and bad actors would not be trying to get it, right? So they wouldn't be trying to break into your system. So I work with data in a variety of different ways, right? I work with it on the client side to protect it, to understand it, right? What is, what do they care about? What are their crown tools, right? All that fun stuff. Um, I do a lot of analytics as well, right? So I do a lot of analytics on my side, right? So I also work with data there, right? Because we do analytics um, for things like project, you know, metrics and, you know, we kind of trend and we do trends and things like that. So I do that as part of my job as well. Um, so I, I like to think I touch data a little bit all day, every day, like just in different ways, really. Yeah, yeah, it, indeed. You know, it's so funny too. You know, I, I have to admit, I was one of those people who said, you know, oh, it's, nobody's going to care about my personal data, right? Until I get a notification from my bank, they're like, did you do this charge? I'm like, um, no, I do not. Yeah. Nope. That's right. <laughs> they all care. They care about the things that you don't think they care about. And that's what they're hoping, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and I will give kudos to my bank's uh, data system for noticing that. Yeah. Shout out. (laughs) But, um, so tell me, okay, so, so Bridget, so let's back it up then. Let's talk about how you got to be where you are today. So tell me, was say when you were six years old, you know, just a kid, you know, was this a dream? What what was the initial dream when you when you were a kid? Girl, I wanted, I thought I was going to be a fashion writer 
for Fogue magazine. I, that was my job. That's what I thought I was gonna do. This little chubby, chubby girl. I thought I was it, I was everything. I was gonna write for Vogue because I love to write and I love reading and I love all that. And I also love fashion. Mm. So I thought, what a great combination. So I went to school for fashion. That's how I started. And oh, and then I was like, oh, this is hard. This is too much. Like, you want me to do an unpaid internship where in New York? And you want me to sleep where? The why? No, no to all that. Hard pass. And then I had to start thinking about what I really wanted in life. And as I got older, I started really digging into data as an asset. I started understanding it. I started every job I had, I had a little piece of it that always had to do with data. I was always doing something with some data set, right? And I, the further I got in my career, and I had every job you could imagine in IT. I was a project manager, a business analyst, a, oh God, I don't know, all kinds of things. I did master data management, data quality, you know, all kinds of things. And um, some things that didn't have anything to do with data for a long time, compliance. And I realized that the heart of all of it was data. And I thought, it's fascinating, right? When you can find a problem within the data that nobody else can find, and you can find that pattern, or I don't know, it was just really, it was like a puzzle. Right. And then, so I got really interested in it. But yeah, it was not at all what I thought I was going to be like. That is for sure. You do not, I don't think six year old girls sit around and dream about being a, you know, a, you know, a data scientist or, you know, a data man. Yeah. Person. <laughs> yeah, they should. <laughs> they should. Little girls listening, you should always dream about being in data. It's very important. Absolutely. I, I hardly agree with it. But yes, yes. So uh, we were not encouraged to that was not, I don't know that we even knew that that if most people didn't boy or girl or any gender knew what that meant when we were young. Uh, maybe, maybe the new alpha generation knows, but um, it's now built into their vocabulary vocabulary from the time they're born. But, um, yeah. but not. yeah, okay, so let's talk about those jobs then. So, and how you progressed and, and so, okay, so you're, 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 Dis disillusionment of the of the fashion industry has has happened. So where do you go to get a where do you go get a job? What's what do you just go? You're gonna take a job. I'm like I'm gonna get a my first job, and I love this story. Um, my first job was a temp job through Robert Half of all places. Um, I was really young in my early twenties, and it was with um, J P Morgan, and I had no experience. I hadn't finished college yet. I had. Because when I decided I didn't want to be a fashion major anymore, I kind of stopped and I was like, okay, now what do I do? And I just needed a job. And they interviewed me and they wanted me to work in IT and support this database. And I'm like, I don't know, nothing from nothing. I'm like, I don't know anything. And uh, this poor lady that interviewed me, was it was clear that I knew nothing. And she was lovely. But, you know, the, the, my recruiter calls me and he's like, oh, they really like you, but she doesn't think you have her experience. So we're going to keep looking for a job for you. I'm like, yeah. And then two days later, he calls me back and he says, you know what? She called me back out of the blue and said, yeah, maybe you don't know, but she really liked you. And she thought that you would be a good person to learn, that you would be able to learn it. And so she wants to take you on. And I'm like, and I thank her all the time because that started my 20 plus year career in IT was from that day. So she took a chance on me. She shouldn't have because I really had no idea what I was doing, but she saw something in me and I think a lot of times that's what it, all it takes is somebody to just see something in you take a chance on you and that started my career in IT and that my first job was actually going through a database and normalizing it right really normalizing the data which for somebody who has no idea what's going on my data nerds out there normalizing data in a database it's hard and this was a not a good, this is a Lotus Notes database, by the way. I should bring that up because that'll tell, that should age me for everybody. But anyway, it was a Lotus Notes database on top of everything else. So yeah, so that was my first real job. Wow. And, um, and I, I, did, I, I did dip out for a bit in compliance, but I, I started out just working in the database and then I started doing materials for training for project management training and just kind of bloomed. Well, wow, that's, that's a, it's an amazing story. I love that story. So you're stepping into this brand new job, have no idea what you're doing. You know, the people who hired you know, you have no idea what you're doing. So how was that? How did you start learning your job? 
I do, a, I'm big on research. So I did a lot of research and I looked, you know, a lot of things up and I said, okay, what do I need to know? Like I bought a Lotus Notes <laughs> one, two, three for dummies book, which I think I still have somewhere. My goodness, I should look, um, you know, and I, and so I, and I did a lot of research and like, how, what should I know? How should I do this? Right. What are the key things I should probably understand? <laughs> and then I am pretty quick at picking things up. And so I just kept doing that and I'd keep little cheat notes, right. Until I got comfortable with the language, right? Because it is a whole IT is a whole other language, right? For people who have never spoken it. But I was always pretty technically inclined, and so it, it did come to me. But it it's scary because you're like, oh my goodness, like I don't know what I'm doing. They're clear about that. Now what, right? It's and I think we all have been in that position. Yeah. And the imposter syndrome is real. It is the struggle is real. Uh, I think with women, it's way real, right? I think we more than any other people in technology, especially, we we feel that we don't belong there. We shouldn't be there because we don't know what we're doing. Sure. And so I had a lot of that. But you just, you, you have to kind of have faith in yourself and just and keep learning and do everything that you can and just continue to learn and grow. Ah, uh, uh, so interesting that you were experiencing those feelings, even knowing that they knew that you you needed to ramp up. And even knowing that you they knew you didn't have the skills. That's, yeah. That's it's, fascinating. It, yeah, yeah. It, it was still real. Like I still felt like, okay, I know that you're on to me. So it wasn't like I was trying to hide it. But then it made me even more motivated. Because right? you almost want to prove people wrong a little bit. Like, hey, I know you didn't think I could do it, but you hired me anyway. But I'm going to show you that you made the right decision, right? You did the right thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. And then you work. At least for me, it makes you work harder. Yeah. Ah, very cool. Okay, so then where did you go? What, what did you do next? I stayed in Chase for a while and bounced around, and then they put me in charge of training the project managers that came in. So I started doing that, and then I left Chase. Um, I went to, oh my God, I relived my career. It's been so long. I went to Cardinal Health, I think. I went, and here's another situation. I started doing um, process improvement. I was I did process improvement, and then I became a lead Six Sigma belt and, and, um, and worked in the IT area to do that, and that was fun. It was different different side of things, but it, it gave me a different view of the data, right? Because there's a lot of data involved in these signals, so that gave me a different view of things. And I really enjoyed that. And then they eliminated my position, so I had to go move to another area. And they put me in the nuclear pharmacy, and they put me in charge of something in the nuclear pharmacy on the IT side. And I went, oh, this is bad. No, I, no, I don't think you should do that. And I, what did I have to do? I had to buy a book on radio pharmaceuticals because I didn't know what anybody was talking about. Shannon, it was a whole, talk about another language. I mean, I was on the planet. I was like, I don't even know what you're saying. And bought a book and learned what it was. And then was in charge of the, the bomb, the bill of materials. I was in charge of the master recipe. I was in charge of training the trainers. I, it just, it was, and all the, and then I was doing all the data for the rollout. I was doing all the data uh, collection for everything. And Again, data center of my job, it always seems to be. So um, and I did that for a while. And that was that was a great experience. That that really taught me a lot. Scary. Again, very scary. Um, but you know, you, it's it's a leap of faith. You just you gotta you gotta trust yourself and you have to have faith in yourself and you gotta just say, hey, you know what? Make it till you make it is a real thing. It's real. And it is possible. I think that's what you gotta do sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Not comfortable, but awesome. <laughs> I love the emphasis on not comfortable. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, but you got to push through. <laughs> to push through. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> so then what? So I was there for a long time, nine years, I think. And then I kind of bounced around a little bit. I did a stint at Nationwide Children's Hospital, where I ran their data governance program, that was another one. They wanted data governance lead. And I went, I have absolutely no idea how to do that. But it sounded fascinating. And then I researched with data governance programs and said, oh, I think this is awesome. I want to learn this. And I, you know, once again, had no business applying for this job, Shannon, no business, no experience. Somehow they decided they were going to hire me, and they did. And um, I almost... Then I almost passed out because I'm like, now what do I do? Now they hired me and now I'm screwed, right? Now I'm in trouble because now these people don't know that I don't know. And now I've got to pretend like I know. And this is even harder. So once again, lots of studying, lots of research. Luckily, hospitals were very 
sharing of information with other hospitals. So that was another learning curve. Um, but then I realized I fell in love with data governance and then that that started my own fair data governance. And then I went to human insurance and ran their data quality for a while. The other had never done, that was exciting, that was fun. Um, I went to DHO and did master data management for a while and uh, database management and um, you know ETL and, and things like that. And no business doing that either because I'm not an architect and I'm not technical. Technical enough to be dangerous should be my nickname. And um, it, that was a great experience because I learned in every job. And like as long as I was learning, even if I didn't like it, I was learning more and more. Uh, and then I went to become a consultant because I thought, hey, why not? This seems like a great idea. Nobody's listening to me. I'm trying to get all these great ideas, but I'm banging my head against the wall. Like, huh, what if it's different over here? <laughs> so I went to work for a, a, a cybersecurity company. I ran their data governance protection and privacy practice for, for, a, for a couple of years. And that was amazing. I thought that was, that was a big learning experience. Um, again, never read a practice before. That was new. I, I, I had people report to me, but that was a new experience. But they took a chance on me. I was, a lot of chances taken on, on, on Dr. Virgil, a lot of them. So thank goodness for those people. And um, and then I realized consultant was it for me. And then I moved to Fertivity when my company started to kind of go a little sideways. And then I jumped over there and I was like, oh, now I'm in data protection. I'm like, okay, so now I'm in this. But I like now it's been a long time and I finally figured out something, but that does not mean that I don't learn something new every single day in my job. Visit dataversity.net and expand your knowledge with thousands of articles and blogs written by industry experts, plus free live and on-demand webinars covering the complete data management spectrum. While you're there, subscribe to the weekly newsletter so you'll never miss a right. beat. Right. Yeah. You know, it's funny, you know, and I, and I've mentioned this a few times in the podcast that, you know, I started the podcast to hear people's stories of how they got into data and know that they're not. Uh, and just to show and demonstrate that there's really no one linear path, right? There's so many different paths to to into data and, and so many different areas of data management to get into. There but, really is. Wow. Yeah, the, uh, but, the, you know, the common thread that I found amongst most data people is the, this insatiable curiosity um, and, and this passion for learning. Although I think that you, like, put an exclamation point on that. <laughs> Yeah, I am a perpetual learner to the nth degree. That's what I would say. Like, if there's more school I could do, I probably would. My sister makes fun of me all the time. Um, I'll probably get another certificate or something at some point. And and but I just love it. I love learning, it, and it's it, I think that's what drives me is learning something new every day. Well, well let's talk about that a little bit because you know you talked about how uh, fashion school was not your thing, but. But yet you have a doctor uh, and at the front of your name. So tell me, when did you go to school for, and what did you, what is your doctorate in? Yeah, my school wasn't even linear. So I went traditional school, I went right out of college, and then I left, and then I came back, and then I left, and I went back. So I did my undergraduate, I just got a business degree, because I said, well, I don't know, I don't want to be pigeonholed so I did the business degree and then I said well I'm gonna get my master's because that seems like a really good thing to do and back in the early 2000s right or uh, mid 2000s that was what everybody was doing right and then I can't remember why but I remember thinking to myself wouldn't it be amazing if you somebody had to call your doctor someday like for some reason and it was a personal goal. It has nothing to do with my job. Nobody at work cares. I mean, that sounds terrible. They do. They were very supportive. But I work in an IT consulting practice, right? So like when you have a doctorate in uh, organizational leadership and culture, they're kind of like, okay, great. But it is amazing how much it helps, right? Especially in the data space, because there's so much organizational change and culture change that has to go on with anything data related, uh, that it, it helps every day. Like you know, I, I can use it in every facet of internally and externally with my clients. It, it definitely helps. So it was just something I did personally so that I could say that I did it. I don't know if everybody does that, but it sounded like a good idea to me. Oh, oh, I love that. So and why did you, so, so again, can you repeat what your doctorate is in and why did you choose that? 
It's actually a DBA. It's a doctor of business administration, but I don't put DBA because then everybody thinks I'm a database administrator. So I can't put that on my signature. I learned that very quickly in a, my company, but it's in um, organizational leadership and culture. And it's really about, you know, finding the best way to lead, mm -hmm. to be led, and how best to right, raise the, the temperature of the culture, right? And, and how all of that works together. Yeah. Uh, my dissertation was on tech people and why they're different and what kind of leadership they need because, in, you know, we are different. And I wanted to say, you know, people say all the time, oh, people don't need jobs. They need people. They need bad managers, right? Toxic environment. I wanted to prove that out and see if it was true in, in the, in strictly in the IT space. Wow. I, I bet you use that every day. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I really do. It's, it's pretty useful. Oh, I'm sure. Well, even when you're talking, you know, data governance and even on the business side, you have to implement some cultural change. Yes. Yes. And it all comes in handy because, you know, you're always going to have the Bob in the corner and it's staring at you like this. I've done it this way for 25 years. I'm not changing it. I'm not classified anything. Right. You know, we all have Bobs. Right. And, it, and it really helps with the Bobs. It's helped, you know, flip things around. So it, it's actually come in really handy. But when people see it at my company, like in action, and they go, oh, I guess that is kind of useful. <laughs> so I like to think it. Oh, I, I love that a lot. Um, yeah, you know, we're, we're yeah, I, I mean, even at Data University, we're, we're looking at getting into teaching more, uh, you know, quote unquote, soft skills, because they're so important. You, you, they're so important. Yeah, the, the people interaction is the most important. It is, and I and I teach as well. I'm an adjunct professor at the same place where I got all my degrees, so and I use it there too. And it, it is, it's really again, that's just a way to give back, and and I enjoy it so much because I like seeing other people learn, right? As well, I also like the lights going off, right, for other people to go, oh yeah, I get it, like, yeah, you get it. You know, that's fun too. Uh, that's that's amazing. So you teach as well. I do yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. You don't know my free time. <laughs> <laughs> <Just> curious. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so, so Bridget, tell me, so what has been your biggest lesson so far in your career? So a couple of things, I think, you know, the one thing I learned really early on, the big lesson I learned is to advocate for yourself, right? That was one thing I learned really early on. I had some pretty terrible leaders, terrible managers, which, which we've all had in our careers. And I realized that if you don't advocate for yourself, <clears throat> you know, and you don't, and especially when you're a female leader, right? Because we often learn that we're afraid to speak up sometimes in spaces, right? We don't want to be, you know, told that we're too emotional or we're too whatever, right? All those terrible words that they use. But, um, but you really do need to learn to speak up in those spaces, right? And advocate for yourself and don't let anybody diminish your, you know, participation and, and diminish your work, right? That's a big thing I learned because it was easy back in the day, 20 years ago in IT, there were not as many women, right? We're still kind of fighting it a little bit, but there's a lot less back then. And it was challenging because men would say the things that they say and it was hard, right? But you still, you had to just push. Um, you got to be resilient, right? You got to just get back up, right? You know, things are hard, life is hard, bad things are going to happen, you're going to get disappointed, but it's how you bounce back, right? And it's how you lead through those times that really kind of show who you are as a person, I think, as a, your character. And then just learning to build really inclusive teams, like, is another thing. I think that's really important. Um, you want a lot of different, diverse voices at the table. I never want to hear the same thing from... I don't want the same bunch of people at the table with the same ideas, right? We don't want a bunch of lemmings at the table, right? We want diverse, we want different, I want out of the box, I want the craziest things, right? Because you never know when something could be brilliant, right? And you want to be around for that. So I think those are some some of the key things, I think, the lessons I've learned. Oh, very good lessons. So and then tell me, so with your background in data, what is your definition of data? So my definition of data, data is the foundational building block of knowledge and decision-making. 
That's my definition of data, right? If that is like, if I had a one-liner, my elevator speech of data for all the data nerds, my data nerds out there, mm -hmm. um, it is the foundational building block of knowledge and decision-making, right? You cannot do anything without the data. Data is so important. It is the new oil, right? We joke about it, but it really is. It, it, the companies are finding more and more that if they don't know where their data is, if they don't understand it, if they don't, they're destined to go into a dark place, right? You just, you gotta know what you have, where it is, what you're dealing with. Um, yeah, it, it is the foundation for everything. Otherwise, why are companies in business, right. right? Yes, they make product, they make widgets, they do, they make a service, but at the end of the day, all that data, if you didn't have it, what are you gonna do, right? Yeah, yeah, so very, very true. So then tell me, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Oh, I love, and I love having this conversation. I love having it with people that talk about AI and ML, right? It's the greatest thing because they're like, ah, it's going to take our jobs, right? That's, you had half the people saying that, you have the other half saying that. But I'll say this, the expansion of AI and machine learning is crazy and the growing need for data security and data management data privacy people is growing exponentially we're still at a skill you know gap here we still do not have enough qualified people to do this work and that's just going to get bigger that gap is just going to get bigger right because you know yes ai and ml make things easier but at the end of the day it's not putting anybody who's building those models who's testing those models right who's protecting those models right you still need people to do that right Computers still need people to tell it what to do, right? So that's why they're not people. So like that's the conversation I like to have, right? And um, that's so that's kind of how I see it playing out. Is I think it's just going to be more important in the future. Um, it, and as businesses also realize that they need to make decisions on that data, they need more people to make sure that data is sound. Yeah, yes. I absolutely agree. I, 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 yeah, I, I see that as well. Um, we're seeing a lot more jobs as a result. <laughs> I mean, that's, it's great. Yeah. But, you know, the fact that there's so little, so few people going into it, you know, is, is the rough part, right? We, you'd like to see yeah. more people focusing on it. Yeah, absolutely. So then what advice would you give to people who may be looking to get into career and data management? Do not fear. Do not fear. Take a leap of faith. There's so many skills that are transferable between things that you may not think about, um, including like project management, problem solving, communication, right? You need those. Like we were talking about soft skills, right? There are soft skills and tactical skills that are universal, right? That you can. So if you just start there and say, hey, well, I have these and that could probably help, then maybe it doesn't seem so insurmountable. You could do the job. Um, you know, the other thing I would say, find your tribe and find a really good mentor or a group of mentors, um, different mentors. You've got to have people that you can go to for advice, sounding boards, right? And, and grow your network because that is where you find advice, jobs, opportunity for different things, you know, like to be on this great podcast, right? Like this is through, you know, a great network of, of like-minded data professionals that I know. And so you get to do these cool things, right? When you know uh, other data people. So I also say, you know, get involved, right? Get involved with your local data groups and, you know, see what's out there. Um, and, and women, 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 yes, please, you know, STEM, 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 right? We, we need more women. You know, women only make up about 30%, I think, of the global workforce in data and analytics still. So we're, and that's even smaller when you get the leadership, right? So we still need more representation of all kinds of diverse people, right? Backgrounds and, and genders and, and all the things. So I, I just encourage people to explore. You know, it doesn't have to be technical. The other thing I say, you do not have to be an architect. You do not have to be a DBA. You do not have to be a technical individual to get into data. People think that, you do not. I am about as technical as it, I need to be, right? But don't ask me to implement anything or configure because you'd be very unhappy. But there are lots of jobs out there that you can do that are strategic in nature that don't require that. So be open. Yeah, I love it. It's so true. I mean, there's so many different 
aspects of, of data management. You, you're right. I mean, you don't have, there aren't, uh, there are data jobs that are not technical. Yeah, and I think a lot of people think, oh, I don't, I'm not smart enough, or I'm not technical enough, or I'm not something enough. You're enough, right? You're enough. Like you are enough, and that you just have to believe it, yeah. and then go forth and prove it. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've found that the data community is so kind and so willing to help each other out, and just everybody loves to talk data. <laughs> and how can we make things better? Absolutely, that is the one thing I will say, hands down. The data community, it's small. It's actually pretty small. Like you run into the same people at the same conferences and all the time. And it's just, I don't know, it's, it is. They're very loving. They're very welcoming. They're very open and sharing their, their, their network and their opportunities. So yes, it is a great community to be a part of. I encourage anybody to be a part of it. Yeah. Oh, I love it so much. Well, Bridget, it's been a joy to get to know you. Um, just yeah, this insatiable curiosity that you have is just it's it's so amazing. Um, thank you for sitting down with us today. Absolutely, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity. This has been a, a joy. Data diversity has been a part of my data journey for years, so it, I really feel like a fangirl like being on this because it's so cool, like to be on something that I look to for guidance and, you know, trainings, advice, my data career, having me on for something like this is just, just come full circle. It's very, very precious to me. So thank you. It's been great. Oh, thank you. Um, so, and tell me if somebody wanted to learn more about Protivity and, and what you do, how would they figure that out? How, where would they go? They can go to Protivity.us. Um, or they can find me, like I'm out there too, like I'm on LinkedIn, I'm around. If you have any questions, you can always find me. Um, I'm always happy to, to meet new data people and, and expand my network. So either way works. Uh, thank you so much. And we'll get those posted to, uh, to the podcast webpage as well. So again, Bridget, thank you so much. Thank you, Shannon. I appreciate it. Uh, and for all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date in the latest in podcasts and in the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Thank you.